Okay. Three main attributes to success. Go. All right. So there's confidence. There's the loyalty you need to have for yourself. And first and for, and the last thing I want to say is uh, definitely you need to fail and, and fail often. That's my three. Okay. That's a hell of a way to start this off. So today on my first ever podcast, I, a lot of you guys for doing this you probably know me, Plutus, from my other content. It's the first ever podcast. I brought over someone. Expert makes his own podcast. They're very good. And we're going to link it below. So you can definitely go check out his podcast. It's called the Sean Boyle Podcast, correct? Yes, sir. You got it. Okay. Um, Sean, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself, your background, what you do? Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I'm really uh, grateful to be the first guest. Uh, you're you know, an amazing person, dude, and the platform is going to continue to grow. So I'm really happy that you're, you're doing this. So what about me? I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I command a, a seven-figure digital marketing agency right now, headquarters in Philadelphia. We have actually locations in, throughout the United States in every single uh, state, to be exact. And we do you know, SEO, PPC, web design, but primarily... What's really big right now is these virtual tours with virtual staging, photography, just a lot of, you know, virtual content with the coronavirus, of course, because it's oh, killing you know, it probably. Yeah, we're doing really well. I mean, I just told you right before the show, I, we made like, in theory, we, we signed like 60 G's today in, in revenue. So it's, now, it's retarded. Now, real quick, for people that don't know, SEO, PPC, you want to explain that? Yeah, so SEO's search engine optimization. So, for instance, let's just say uh, Plutus for Jared, his brand. If you wanted, if he wanted to rank for his brand, and you would just type in Plutus, Jared would pop up, and you would be able to find him. Just like for me, if you were to Google, you know, virtual tour services, like stop where you're doing right now and go on Google, type in virtual tour services in Philadelphia. Do it right him. now. Well, yeah, <laughs> you'll find Momentum 360 at the top because that's good SEO. Uh, PPC is pay-per-click, so it's digital advertising. It's kind of just using the same keywords, but you have to pay for it. So in my opinion, you're going to ask, all right, what's going to be better? SEO, we get 85 to 90% of our revenue. People search for us. We don't pay extra for, you know, all these uh, ads. And so it's just a more efficient way of doing business. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else you want to drop about yourself, your background? Yeah, I mean, I went to Penn State. I graduated in April. I'm now very grateful to have worked my butt off. And now I, you know, I'm, I'm an owner of a company. I host, you know, the Sean Boyle podcast. We do it weekly, uh, interviewing uh, people of power, entrepreneurs. Uh, I do, I'm trying to incorporate more comedians. Uh, like I'll tell you estate. too, people, you know, a lot of these mainstream podcasts, they get on people that are already established and like they get how to get up there. But then me and you, especially your podcast, which has done multiple podcasts, now you're finding the people who are in the game right now who currently know going currently know how to do it. So I think almost because you have a competitive advantage, you're listening to podcasts like yours, but for someone that's kind of already accomplished it and doesn't really know what the new thing going on is. Yeah, man. I mean, it's really simple. I mean, I just go on LinkedIn and I say, hey, you know, I, I checked out a couple, a couple of episodes and I do. And um, I, I think it's important to check out other people's stuff. And then once you discover who they are, what they have going on. And you're like, oh my God, I really want them on my show. You just reach out to them in a very, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're just blunt and you're, you're, you're just, all right, this is what I'm looking for. And, and you're like, hey, let's do it. And people are very accommodating. They want to have you on if, you know, you're very passionate about what you have to say. And the fact that you give them a platform, I always say like for Jared, hey, be on my podcast, I'll be on yours. And it's that mutual value. So it's, we're exchanging, you know, our contacts. And that's, that's so, so important, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. My, uh, my father told me the saying, friends are like money in the bank, which I think he said his father told him, I, I believe. Uh, which so is such a good saying. You know, it's like, it's like anything else, it's an asset, you know, especially if you're genuine. I'm, I'm talking about being a fake psychopath. I mean, really make friends who are valuable people. And it's like money in the bank because friends are connections, it's networking. You know, who knows what kind of opportunity it can lead to, anything. Yeah, dude, they always say, you know, network, uh, your net worth is your network. And it's so true. I mean, it's a fucking cliche phrase for sure. But, you know, it's true. I mean, the more people you know, the more connections, the more doors you can unlock. I like to think of yourself as a master key. And, you know, meeting people are these doors. And the more doors, the more keys you can find. In, and it's just before you're the fucking gatekeeper. And you can just unlock, you know, pretty much anything you want. So it's, you know, you definitely, and for me, I used to be a really antisocial kid, like not that many people know, like I tell you, like I, I still suffer from like some social anxiety and people say, oh my God, you're on all these shows, like you, you talk very eloquently, whatever. I, I try to just be as humble as possible. I'm, you know, nothing crazy here, but um, you know, it, it used to be difficult for me. It used to be difficult to make connections. And, you know, when me and you used to go to like those uh, four or five uh, parties, um, you know, and, and 
and it was great. I mean, it was fucking hilarious. I mean, we can, we can get to that a little more, but it was, uh, it was fun. And, and sometimes right before that, I would have tremendous anxiety. And when I'm on interviews, and it's just, you know, it, it's, you're not your emotions. You have to think, okay, what are you really going to do? And once you understand that, you might be going through crippling anxiety right now that you cannot, like, if I'm, let's just say I'm going to go in a meeting, you know, it's for Friday, right now I have a meeting at four o'clock and it's three. 50 I'm like freaking out I'm sweating you know, I've been taken out of it you know it's relaxed you have to think you're fine yeah you're happy. yeah absolutely uh, you're you're freezing a little bit on the signal there you're good is is now a little better uh you know a second try your connection's unstable uh, I guess we'll just keep going hopefully it's fine can you hear me yeah. fine yeah, crystal clear. I can hear you fine. Cool, cool. I mean, yeah, I think that a lot, a lot of people get stuck in their head with a feeling of, you know, just anxiety. anxiety. Like they don't realize how normal it is, especially because our, I think our culture is very toxic in the idea that it glorifies and makes things okay when it's not okay. In a sense, like, oh, you have anxiety. It's okay. Separate from the group. Take your time. You know, it glorifying being unhealthy. Glorifying certain things that should be glorified. I think that. We much better in a society where it's a little tougher, but it makes you stronger. If you are like an ice cream, this is like you just subscribe. So you're at you know a club, and it's really nerve wracking to go up to the pretty girls there and talk to them. And it's uh, technically it's illogical because like nothing's gonna happen. But like it's just like you know what if what if I get rejected? What if I come across weird, awkward? And it's about yeah, I, I be aware of that anxiety in your head. You can be aware of it, but you have to make the deliberate choice. Well. To ignore it and proceed with what you know you have to do because that's quite literally your only option your options are to just do it or to not do it you remember when we went to that one networking event in uh like not penn's landing but that like navy field yeah right? yeah, yeah yeah and um my, the thing that i want to do is uh we got so we were uh there was like some wine tasting or whatever and we got i was fucking hammered i was so drunk and um, the first thing I did was I, you know, I, I see this table of all girls and I'm like, all right, like, and I'm not trying to like hook up with them, but it's, just, it's, it's to get that anxiety out. You do the hardest thing first, go right to the table. And I was like, Hey, what's going on? Exchange some numbers. And once you, you know, you do that, you, you get familiarized, you become comfortable in your setting you can now dominate and operate. And again, everything that you put in your mind is limitations that you give onto yourself. You need to look inside. You don't look external. It's stuff like, oh, like I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. This person's, you know, making me nervous. That, that, you know, add or it's yourself. It's your own self-reflection. So the, the sooner that you can, can come to terms with it, it's all internal, the better off you're going to be. I made the same mistakes people are listening to this podcast about like, oh, you know, you blame society, blame this. You can't play the victim. You have to look inside and Sure, you're going to have outliers that, you know, fucking not everything's perfect, but it's internal. And it, ultimately, it's the attitude in which you exhibit. If you have an, a, a, you know, you don't even need to be an, an entrepreneur. You don't need to be the smartest person in the room. I'm fucking far from it. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I, you know, I can't even fucking count sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, but what separates me from, I think, a lot of people, uh, especially in my age group, is my work ethic, for sure. But the fact that I'm not afraid to uh, take these leaps and bounds, like I'm not afraid to be, you know, the, the dumbest person in the room and I'm always willing to learn. Yeah. And you know, you're willing see. and you're willing to be uncomfortable, which a lot of people aren't are say, I can't do this because I feel uncomfortable. I get anxiety. You're, you're willing to just accept that you have anxiety, correct? Dude, yeah. And that's the first step to it. I mean, it's like any, um, it's like, a, you know, if you're a heroin addict or an alcoholic, the first, what's the first step of getting better? You have to actually acknowledge that you have a problem. For me, it was um, like, and I was telling you, dude, I don't know if I, I told you this story. I told a million people, but um, when I was in school, I was managing school and the company. So I was having extreme anxiety with that. I was sleeping two to three hours per night for about 90 days. It was fucking hell, you know, and I'm, I'm still currently weeding off some, uh, you know, anxiety medication as we speak, but it's, it's stuff that, you know, you need to address and you need to just, you know, come to terms with it. And, and it's the biggest thing that, I mean, it's like anything, then you can start to formulate that plan and say, okay, like, it is what it is, just accept it and then get a strategy and move from there. Whether that's your therapy or looking internally for yourself, doing fucking DMT and mushrooms, be like Joe Rogan, <laughs> you know, but you just gotta, you gotta search for your soul, man. You gotta, you gotta really oh. dig deep. You can be on this podcast Monday Rogan and I said, have you ever tried DMT? Uh, it's like, you know, oh, my, <laughs> my, my, uh, my hair is falling out. Oh, have you tried DMT? No, Joe, I haven't tried it. Try some right now, man. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's exactly how it is. I was looking on our Rogan when him and uh, him and Post Malone were doing mushrooms, and um, especially when him and uh, it was him and Tyson, and they were fucking. Tyson's like, uh, he's like, yeah, man, I'm training for I'm training for my boxing match with uh, with uh, what's his name, uh, fucking um, Roy Jones, and uh, yeah, I can't do DMT no more, man. And Rogan's like. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's uh, great. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like it's just—it's hilarious. Rogan, Rogan's the best. He's so fucking funny. But Rogan thought out. Uh, do you know what happened with uh, Spotify? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little upset about that. He, let, you know, just happened to be the questionable people that, that they got the podcast removed from Spotify. Out, uh, Jones is gone. Basically, all the like people that are considered right far right wing by the media that calls them that this podcast are kicked off. They're gone. Well, I think it's, you know, Joe Rogan's, in my opinion, the, the least person we all suspect to sell out. I mean, that's like the, the his antithesis epitome of him as a person is not selling out as being true to his word. So, do I think he sold out? I mean, what does that even really mean? I mean, you know, if we really define it as like, okay, he's going to just like take a bunch of money and, you know, just fucking bark under some you know, new tree, then sure. You can say he sold out, but really, I mean, listen, he's going to, it's the same JRE, you know, it's the same kind of guests. Um, I want to see, I mean, you know, I, I want to see, is he going to smoke weed? Is he going to talk about stuff in a different light? I mean, I think only time will tell and we can revisit this conversation, you know, give it a month and then he's had more guests. He's I mean, but one of my concerns is if, they, if they're knocking off people like Alex Jones, I forget the others, but it was all similar types of people, like right wing right-wing explainers, right-wing people, yeah. then they're probably not going to let new right-wing people come on the show. Like, if they would kick Alex Jones' podcast off, they're probably not going to let Alex Jones back on, which to me is concerning. It's more, more censorship, more not getting the full picture out there to the people. You know, it's just concerning. Yeah, it's not that I, I think it's inherently bad. I think it could be. Dude, Alex Jones has given, given Joe Rogan millions upon millions of views. So if Shopify or if Spotify is like, oh, no, we can't have – you know, Alex on for his fucking ideologies and he's a crazy conspiracy theorist. What the fuck are you even having Joe Rogan for? What do you like? Yeah, like, sure, Joe Rogan is a very fascinating personality. His interview skills are some of the best. I, I, I even put him right in with Howard Stern. You know, that's just my opinion. But he, it brings along with that the, the guests Miley Cyrus, Mike Tyson, fucking Peterson, Jocko. Um, he's a black guy. Uh, you know what's his oh, name? Oh, nigger old Grass Tyson or whatever. No, 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 no. Um, David Goggins, the Navy oh, SEAL. Oh, he's great. All those fucking guys, man. It's like you—you you have to, you know, look at who you're dealing with here. I mean, like the fucking Spotify deal was huge. I mean, hundred mil—it's a lot of money, but you know, you, you need to keep it the same. And history shows right. is that it's not going to be—it's not going to be the same. But I hope it is. I, I hope that it. it I, really I hope is you're right. Yeah. I, I hope so too. I just, it, it was definitely concerning seeing that. Yeah. I mean, you know, Joe's uh, I don't care for his stand up that much. I don't think he's that funny as a comedian, but he's a great podcast. Host. Great fucking podcast, man. Like that's what I'm, I started my podcast from Joe Rogan. My logo is literally if Joe Rogan wanted to sue my ass right now, <laughs> I would be screwed because he, you know, he has, um, dude, I, I pretty much have his, his same logo, you know, for the most part, but shh, I'm not going to talk about that. Shh. I think my viewers are not too high right now. <laughs> so I, I want to focus on, huh? Oh, did you say you're, you're high right now? Did you, did you no, I said my, my viewer, my, <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately not. I said my viewership's not that high right now. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, this, this, fine, this is being posted online. I am certainly not on any substances. Um, no. So I want to focus on uh, success, goal achievement type of thing. Why, why do you think so many people fail? Why do I think so many people fail? I think, so that's, so I'm going to take that question as people like fail and fail, like they just quit right out. You know, that's what I, I, I think you're meaning. Like rather than they just fail in business and they just, they, you know, use it as motivation. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people well, we, we fail, all fail and yeah, we, we all fail. I mean, people fail for, I failed. I even like today, I made like we on, on paper, we signed a 60 grand worth of clients today. Now I, I failed in, you know, I mean, it's really dependent upon how you, how you feel. I mean, not bringing enough revenue. Let's just talk about that. Um, you don't bring enough revenue. Okay. Like you fail and, and you're going to go out of business. You got to learn from that though. You got to fucking learn from that. 
because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to fail. And I'll, I'll hand raise. I'm going to make, dude, today's what, September 17th, 2020. You know how many mistakes I'm going to make even before the weekend is here? So many. Like tomorrow, I'm going to like fucking, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wake up and I'm probably going to be late to my bus. I'm going to dress myself in like my colorblind ass. So there's, there's a bunch of different failures you could really I'm, turn I'm into. I'm going to make more failures than you tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and it's, you look at that as like what you just said, that is the attitude you need to have because the more failures you're going to have, the more opportunity to learn. And that's what you need to think. I was just on the podcast with uh, my boy, um, Antonio, and he was saying that, you know, he asked pretty much the same question. It's like, you, you need to fail early and often because yeah. once you do that, then you can use that as, as motivation. Well, I, as would, ammo. I would then argue that if you use the failure for growth and learning, it's not a failure. It's only yeah. failure if you give up because <clears throat> then that's true failure. Yeah, and I don't need, that, that's exactly, that's perfectly said. And I don't even determine like failure as like, it's, it's again, what do you determine failure? There's no concrete. It's not two plus two. You know, it's not some type scientific thing. It's up for interpretation. So if you determine failure as, oh, I didn't make a hundred million dollars this year, or you can determine a failure. Oh, I don't have, you know, kids. I'm sorry. We don't have a meal tonight. There's two separate um, ideologies and sides of the spectrum. You know, it's up for interpretation. So I don't necessarily, I, I, I don't even know what I define them as. I, I wouldn't even say failure. I, I would say when something doesn't go my way, it's just learning. That's what it a, is. A bump in the, yeah, learning. I like that. A but I think there the definitely can be failure. Failure is choosing to let things not going your way get the best of you. Like, for, I'll give an example. Like when I internship with you, you know, mm -hmm. at the time I took that, I wanted to be the next Wolf of Wall Street. That was the goal. And yeah. between your internship and I had an internship before you, where I worked at a stock trading firm, both yours and other place utilize computer guys. The like computer skills are really important. And that is A, what motivated me to switch to MIS, which is management information systems. I was finance. And B, when I went when I working with you, you know, I thought I was the next Jordan Bell for I could do cold calls. And then I kind of found <laughs> out that, that it was fun, but it really wasn't for me as I thought it would be. Um, you know, obviously, I'm very grateful for the internship with you guys. And I learned a shit ton. And the internship with you guys also, you could say, you know, I, I failed in the sense that I didn't get nearly as many sales as I wanted to. But working with you guys, learning the digital marketing concepts kind of influenced me towards what I'm doing now, where I have way better grasp of the digital marketing world. So I don't count that as a failure, I count that as growth. Versus, let's say, same situation, I'm like, damn, I, I didn't make that many sales. I guess I should switch to a, a bio major because I suck at business. That might be a failure. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think that that's something that, you know, a lot of people could learn from, like, uh, especially in today's day and age, if, you know, it's that instant gratification, right? We need to, you know, if you started up, <clears throat> excuse me, a new podcast and, you know, oh, we don't have a thousand subscribers yet. Oh my God, we're fucking, we're failure. Oh, we just started this business and we're not making, you know, 10,000 a month, 10,000 a month. That's, that's nothing. Oh my God. It, again, it's, it's, it's baby steps. It's growth that you need to be in for the long term. And it really all stems from what you love to do. Like I told you the story and I'll, I'll tell it again for your viewers, but I used to be, uh, I, I was an engineering major at Penn State and I wasn't even that good at math. I just saw, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to make $80,000, $80,000 starting salary. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. All that money. But I would hate my life if I did that. So would I sell, would I sell my soul for $80,000 or would I take the risk what would I do when I take the risk of being a business owner, 23 years old, and yeah, I have to work my ass off. I have to work 12, 14 hour days, but you love that. You love doing that. You love it so much that not only would you leave a party for you, you would wake up at 5 a.m. You would wake up at crazy hours and you do it because you love it. You're helping, you're helping clients and you're helping build and further on their goal, which is just yes. growing themselves. So you know, it, it stems from what you love to do, man. And I'll, I'll say it to him blue in the face. I'll take someone with passion and enthusiasm all day long rather than, you know, someone who has some, fun, you know, ho-hum de Harvard degree or, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, if, the Harvard, if the Harvard degree, if they love what they do too and they have a Harvard degree, then I might go with that Harvard guy. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, the issue with failure too is a lot of people are just making bad decisions. Like they go in – and they get, you know, 100K in debt for a sociology degree. And then the be their best option is to make 50K a year as a sociology professor. 
and then that they're mad at the whole system of capitalists because they're, they're not able to pay their debt. And it comes down to like, you're not, we don't owe you a sociology degree. No one's, no one, you don't have to do that. There's, there's majors that make more money than others and you have the freedom to choose. But then that comes with the responsibility of choosing your major. And that's, you know, people get petty, people get angry because they're doing a job they don't like. Like you were saying, you, you work, you know, probably 80 hour a week, maybe more. I know you work all the time, but you love it. And it's not work, you know, a lot of people today, they want to paint work as evil, as bad. I actually, I'm reading something from this. I did do my homework yesterday. This is from my class, my sociology class, Sociology Explained Life. Um, this is a real, I was reading it. I was just taken back by a quote in here. I'm going to read it to you. I want to get your opinion on it. So it says, you probably um, think of the diplomas you will, you have or will get. You probably hope that these pieces of paper will help you get a job. Um, sorry, I got to figure out where I'm here. Okay, sorry, wrong quote. The power and reality of money derived from shared belief. Nothing more. Okay, I agree with that. The power of money is from shared belief. We, we all agree that a dollar is a dollar. Fine. People who have lots of money are powerful because they can use their money to get others to work for them. So that's implying that the people that are powerful are powerful because they take advantage of people. Maybe they're powerful because they offer value. Maybe they get people to work for them because the people want to and they enjoy their work. You know, and the, 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 the structure of our school system is setting up whole generation to go into the workforce hating corporate when this plane companies people love their job they love the industry you know i work with, i work with you i thought it was great i had a good time there you the other you know anyone in the manager was fucking great and this this idea that people that run the company the ceos the managers the bosses they're all evil it's not true yeah that's a great quote i mean i that's what what book is that by the way called the sociology uh examine life basically to explain why Marxism and communism is good and white men are evil, you know, all the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was, taking a, I was taking a sociology class in college um, last year and it's just, it's so far left. It's so far just blaming, blaming the, you know, the, the people and you gotta have a, you know, the, the system needs to take over and people can't be, you know, hold their own um, accountabilities and, you know, the individual isn't strong anymore. And it's just, right. I'm, I'm summarizing it, but. I mean, the, the concept just, is the people that have power have power because they take advantage of people. Yeah. And that does happen, but that is not the standard. No, exactly. And if you look at the fundamental truth of human beings, and what I mean by that is if you look at, you know, Adam and Eve, you look at, you know, the first humans, they were responsible for themselves. They were responsible for, you know, any great leader. They didn't get, you know, sure, you have your outliers who, oh, the parents made millions of dollars, but the, the people that were, you know, that have been the richest in the world, like Genghis Khan, um, Mansa Musa, their parents didn't have money. They, they for the majority, they worked their butt off uh, for themselves and, and they grew their own brand. So, it boggles my mind when people, you know, they, they want to just get that handout and they want, you know, like the more so the Democrats, they want, and this is where we, you know, me and you agree politically uh, with a lot of things is because we're more conservatives because we believe fundamentally that we, the people are stronger than the system. Sure. We need a, a basic system for, you know, health protection, yeah. protection. Yes. Very well said. But for the most part, we can, we can, do our, ourselves a favor and just being self-accountable and uh, growing by ourselves. We don't need, you know, obviously we need a system, but we don't, we don't need further system like, like the taxes. And, you know, we, we don't, again, it just goes to, uh, you know, and this is where, you know, uh, Democrats and um, Republicans differ, but I think my and your fundamental belief is, is better because it, it holds you accountable uh, instead of just, you know, relying on the system. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think immigration should be a question on job application. If you're a qualified candidate, why? To me, that's racist. Why? Why would I need to know your race for filling a job application? I, I don't care what your race is. Are you qualified to do my job? Are you going to do a good job? At, you know, are you willing to go with the so going true. value for that for a job? I don't care if you're black, white, purple. You know, it doesn't matter. And that, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, like when I hire people, I don't care. You know who they are or what they're about. I just care, can you do a damn good job? That's really all it is, you know? It's, right. it's really, that's all that I care about. I don't care, 
you know, especially for, for us. I don't care if we're working. They're, they're working from Pakistan, from fucking the moon. I, I don't care. If they can do a decent job, that's, that's all I care yeah, about. Man, you're up in the moon. I'll take a job in the moon. I would too. <laughs> yeah, chill with Musk. Yeah, that must be sick. Uh, imagine living with Elon Musk. That'd be wild. His, I've never, okay. Think about his taste in women. Like, he married some goth girl who, she's beautiful. She's cute. She is, she is very cute, but you have to look and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. You know? I, I could see myself doing the same thing. If I got, like, rich and famous, I still want some, like, cute little goth girl. You know? I, I, I think I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the gothies. It's, uh, it, I don't know. For me, it boggles my mind. I, I can't necessarily, like, wrap my head around it. But it's not my style, you know? He's yeah, each his own, right? Yeah, exactly. If you uh, if you could have a dinner with a famous businessman, who would you want to eat with? That's a great question, man. That's a fucking great question. Um, it can be like you know, business owner, anybody. Um, Anyone who's both rich and well known. I would want to say, man, you kind of stumped me on that one. I would say uh, the first business owner that I really fell in love with was Henry Ford. Henry Ford, okay. So, I, what anyone today, today? I would say, I mean, I want to. I don't want to be cliche. I, I want to try to pick someone who, Timothy Thera, a Ferris. I'd go with Tim Ferris. I'm not familiar with him. What is he? What's his thing? So Tim Ferris, uh, he wrote the Four Hour Body, the Four Hour Work Week. He is a blogger, podcaster, entrepreneur. He has a supplement company. I forget the name of the company, but I'm actually reading it right now. Audible, um, Audible book. And um, he's just talking about how you can automate your business because yes, I, I work, I am a business owner, but my time is delegated to actually running it. Whereas I want to move to where it's more passive, where I have people, I hire people who can do the work for me and I can just sit back, go to a beach and just work four hours a week instead of, you know, the fucking crazy hours I do now, you know? Right. You just kind of check in, make sure everything's smooth. And that's yeah. how someone like Elon Musk builds a, uh, you know, an empire like he's built. You know, Elon Musk isn't going in and micromanaging every employee. He couldn't. He's not. He's not building the rocket ships. He's just Elon Musk. Is just a good salesman, really. Yeah. Good manager. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think all people they fundamentally who are successful, like they need you, they need you know you need to learn how to sell, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. You need to learn how to sell, how to be good with with people. Like if you're, you know, I've noticed like mean. If you're mean, you're not gonna be a good leader. You just can't because people are gonna yeah. go against you. You have to be likable. You have to know how to talk to people. Um, yeah. You know, what would you say are certain? Name me some attributes of a good, good manager, team leader. A good manager, team leader. Um, definitely someone who listens to the problems of the technicians. So, I'll set the stage for you. There's the technicians who do the work. These the account managers. Okay. Then there's the entrepreneurs. Technicians should do the work. Managers should manage the technicians doing work. The entrepreneurs should be focused on two things selling and brand awareness that's it okay that's like the fundamental aspects of the business so for a manager i really look for someone who can do multiple tasks you know multi, obviously multitask but who can really you know like be live in that fast paced environment without getting overwhelmed with, with like you know there's a million I, I i guess a good analogy would be you know let's just say there are a million flies in my you know um like hornets, let's just say there's a million hornets in my little office space right here. And I get stung once, right? Now I either have to worry about the sting that I just got, or I have to worry about, oh my God, there's so many hornets here, like whatever. If a good manager, a good manager will worry about their one sting and then move on instead of getting, oh my God, there's a million hornets out there. You have to worry about the task at hand and then proceed to the next one. You know what I mean? You can't get ruffled by, you know, a million tasks. I mean, I have a million things happening right now, but you need to prioritize them. I mean, are they, you need to worry about them right now? No. So you're not, and that's the whole, whole point of um, the manager is they, they need to obviously concretely understand what you need them to do and go out and manage it. So um, that's a really good, you know, uh, core, core aspect of a leader and definitely understand the, the business model for sure. Okay. I like that. I think yeah. also, 
it's very big something I've learned through my current issues, my court case, my this, my that, is the ability to take heat and pressure. It's really important as a manager. If you crack under pressure, you just can't. You're not going to be able to be a manager. You're done. You're done, bro. You can't crack because there's going to be – there's always five – like you're saying, you know, bees. I, I say fires. There's always going to be ten new fires to put out every day. Dude, if you crack under pressure, like if I, if I succumbed to – the, the average pressure that I face on a daily basis, I wouldn't even be around. I'd be locked up in a fucking room in a funny farm somewhere. Like <laughs> a funny farm. <laughs> yeah. Like you have to really, that's why you say you have to own yourself. You have to look deep in your soul and just fucking do it. Just like, again, you're not your emotions, your emotions, your motion creates emotion. So the more you move, the more you just get out there, whether it's go for a run, figure out the problem at hand, the more that creates, you know, good emotion, the more that you sit back and you worry about it you're not going to do something. So it's, it's two different energies. It's, it's, um, it's very fascinating. I mean, I want to learn more about the human brain about how like certain synapses work. And I mean, a good staff review that I think the audience should, should learn is, you know, we produce over like, you know, 50,000 thoughts every single day. And guess the amount of percentage that those are negative thoughts. 25? No. 80%. 80 percent. 80 percent. Yep. Negative. 80 percent are negative. Yep. So what that's wow. telling is the the average person is you know ne- they're they're more negative. There's some realism turned to that too, and you could I mean we can kind of debate realism and and negativity in terms of like oh like I should probably cross the street and like or I should drive a Ferrari, but it's like eh, I, I don't want to drive a Ferrari because I don't have necessarily the money for that. You know what I mean? So that's that's kind of the two. To, right. To, to the thing is inherently negative. I, I do think people, a lot of people, especially our current day and age, rates of depression are way up. Um, and and uh, to add on to what you were saying, um, you know, you, you can change your emotions and dictate your emotions. I, I strongly, I strongly believe that you know a self fulfilling prophecy is. Yeah. So it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. So let's say you know when you're a kid, every kid has trouble, and you know therapist says, well you got depression now you go home and every time you're sad you think oh well you know it's normal everyone gets sad sometimes and now when you feel sad you think oh well i have depression and you fixate on it and it snowballs into well now it it goes from just a outside force to you a characteristic of you i am a depressed person i have depression i'm depressed versus you know beforehand you were just like a normal person depressed once in a while and you know i'm not going to completely shit on my own psychology but I, for my own friends, I've known many people, it is destroyed. They, they get a diagnosis, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and they are never the same after that because of that diagnosis. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They play into the role of it, and it's a snowballing effect. And I heard, I think it was Dean Grease, you know, the, the, one, of the, one of the entrepreneur guys always on YouTube with like a car and a bookshelf in the background, not Ty Lopez, but the other one with like slick back hair, Dean something. Oh, Dean, uh, Dean uh, Grand Dozier or yes. some shit like that? Yes. So he was saying how, and I believe it, I could be wrong on this, about how our life is a story. It might be a different guy, but it's someone like him. Our life is a story. Change the story, change the outcome. So if your story is um, when you're a kid that you're, you know, maybe you're a bad student, you're bad at math, then that's in your head, you're bad at math. And you might actually low-key be good at math and able to figure it out, but because you not believe that you're just, you know, I'm right brain, left brain, I'm not, I'm just not good at math. You, because you believe that you will manifest it. That's the story you tell yourself, the story you produce. Change your story. I, you know, I struggle with math, but I'm able to push through it. And I really understand it once I really push through it. Change the story, change the outcome. Yeah, that's true. Uh, sure. I mean, you, you got it like Kevin Hart to go on the same point. He has a, like he was on Rogan's podcast. He was saying like, you know, your life is a book. What's your book? And like, yeah, you might be going through some, crazy shit right now but think of how epic and how think of how fucking epic it's going to be if you if you finish the book oh you beat depression you beat anxiety you beat all these crazy fucking emotions that everyone was seeing that exact clip recently i know exactly what you're talking about yeah and it's so true i mean you could i mean like joe rogan says oh live your life as a movie you know like but it's the same it's the same narrative man like and that's why like so let me lay out my daily schedule like what i do Primarily what I do in the beginning of the morning and, um, or yeah, beginning of the morning and then uh, at the end of the night, okay? This is what I think 
like, sure, my work ethic, whatever, but like, I think 90% of what I do when I wake up and when I go to bed is what makes me further along than some other person. Okay. So what, what I mean by that? I wake up around 5.30, 5.45, okay? Every, tr every morning I try to do that. And that itself obviously is a win because I'm waking up early. Immediately, immediately, my ring to my, my um, alarm is like a very soothing, peaceful, meditative, uh, you know, tone. And I just let it play for like, you know, 20 minutes. And what I do is like, whether I'm out of bed, I shower, but I do this immediately. Like first five minutes when I wake up is I journal. Okay, what, you know, like, what, what do I need to do today? What's my power list? Okay, so I go through like five things I really need to do today. Then I go through my, um, you know, cantations of, um, you know, I, I just pronounce, oh, I'm, I'm confident. I am uh, a champion. I am a winner. I am, I am safe. I am healthy. I am secure. I am secure with who I am as a human being, as a man. You know, I am successful. You start putting yourself, I am, I am, am. And your brain doesn't know dreams from reality. So they, they go, that's why, oh my God, like that, that dream I had the other day, Jared, it was so realistic. Because your brain, you, it kind of is the same thing. You're, you're unconscious, but you're, it's, it's the exact same thing. So with that said, you can kind of trick your mind and you kind of have to create a false reality of like, if you're not confident, if you're not healthy, if you're not, you know, you got to proclaim yourself, I am healthy. I am confident. I am the man that I say I am. That's a snowball you know, my, right there. That's how you escape what I was talking about. This, this supplement prophecy, the snowball effect. That's how you yeah. escape it right there, what you're saying. And it fucking helps because I wake up and I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. Like, let's kill this day. I'm ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Like, anxiety is not going to get me today. Like, I'm cool, you know? So you have that. And then I, I, I fast, like coffee or whatever. Um, and then, you know, go throughout work. And then on the nighttime, on that, on that side of things, is I kind of do um, – the opposite, right? So I journal, how did my day go? What were some trouble areas? A am I thinking about something external that I shouldn't be? Okay, what's the root of this anxiety? What's the root of me feeling, you know, ill or me feeling like, what's what's the bare bones? What's the cause of it? Because if I figure out the cause, I can attack it. And then, oh, it's not so bad. You know, you reveal, you pull the, the, the curtain from the, from the, you know, whatever. Um, from over the eyes or whatever the expression is. And you can determine, okay, it wasn't as big and bad as scary as I thought it was. You know, this is just, it is what it is. And you come to terms with it. And so you're not as anxious. So um, after that, I, I probably murder like a, a decaf tea or whatever, like with some honey, apple cider vinegar. And then um, I just go to bed like around, I'd say 9, 30, 10. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I put some, uh, music on for about five, 10 minutes and I meditate. And normally now, like the past week, when I just meditate, I just fall right asleep. I just think, okay, what's my day tomorrow? Like, what am I gonna do? Okay, and then I picture myself in the same clothes I'm gonna lay out, <clears throat> taking the same transportation. And I have, okay, what do I have tomorrow? I have a big meeting. Let's visualize myself in the meeting, being successful, getting the client. And I visualize myself. So when I literally wake up, not only do I have that in my mind, but I'm okay. Now I need to go back. I'm, I am confident. I am strong. I'm, and then you believe it. You really believe it because, oh my God, it, I, I'll dream my next day sometimes. Like that's happened so many times now. And it, it, it's great. I mean, like with lucid dreaming and stuff, like you can, um, I don't want to talk about that now because that's kind of, uh, that's a long, boring uh, process to have a, a long, dream. long, long haul, different podcast there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's, uh, you know, that that's really what I do. And you know, having that instilled confidence. Uh, and again, for me, it's not natural. I don't, I didn't have this natural confidence. I believe it because I, I believe it. And I believe it because it is the truth. And I think people see it, people like you, people like celebrities, people like me, and they just, they, they do assume because we're presenting it that it's our natural state. And it's not, I have, so many, I have so many people say, I'm just not like that. What makes you think I'm just like that? Why, why, do you, why are people assuming that the people that you see on TV, people that are confident, that are people that have the attributes that you want to have, why are people always assuming that that's natural? Why can't they assume that they can develop it? You know, that, that's kind of concerning that people don't realize it. Like, clearly, you realize that. I realize that. Yeah. You call me you want to be. Yeah, 100%. Man. And I mean, it's, uh, it's true. I mean, it, everything you're saying is, um, you know, your words to God's, God's ears, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's what people really should be taking seriously is, sure, going to the gym is great. If you're overweight, 
and you're, you know, high, hypertension, high blood pressure, whatever, diabetes, you should probably go to the gym and focus on your diet. But mentally, your mental health is so much more important. Um, at least I think. I mean, not saying you need, you know, oh, 100% mental health, 0% physical. You need to, you know, I'd say it's probably like 80-20, you know, is what you need to uh, to really do. So, yeah, it's true. I mean, you just need to, you know, think about the person you want to be and reverse engineer that and be that person. It's that simple. Before we end this, can I ask you, you mentioned um, I drink apple cider vinegar. Do you drink kombucha? No, I saw you followed my, uh, you followed me, you made a new kombucha Instagram. That's awesome. Like doing reviews. Yeah. I drink not so much, I pretty much do kombucha because like apple cider vinegar and then like with my tea. So it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, you'll, you'll probably tell me wrong, but um, kombucha has a little, uh, little extra added goodies in it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have, I have uh, drinking it before. I, I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I'm starting, I'm starting the kombucha page thinking if I can get enough following, I could, you know, be a paid for ad advertisement or something, but uh, so I'm doing that. Keep doing it, man. You, you'll yeah. get there. Shout out to my kombucha page. People will go follow. Um, but anyway, Sean, thank you for your time and thank you for being my first guest on hopefully what will be a good podcast to come and keep going. Absolutely, man. Listen, you just got to keep banging at episodes. I always say that. So I'm uh, honored to be number one for sure. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Hi, right, guys. Uh, his podcast will be in, I don't want to point that way. His podcast will be below in the description. So definitely, definitely go check it out. And again, thank you, Sean. You got it, man. Take it easy. You too. Bye. Peace.